Here's some china. That looks good. And then do we have some ride? Yeah, we got a little ride here. Cool. Just like hearing where my tracks wound up, making sure everything's bounce with each other before I start doing any kind of processing or anything. I just like hearing all the drum tracks sit well with each other as far as like for cymbals at least the individual close accent mics versus the rest of the kit and the more I can get a balance on ahead of time before I do any kind of processing the less stuff I usually wind up doing and kind of preserving the integrity of the audio a little better. Okay, this is sitting pretty good. Um, next up for me would be to start putting my noise gates on these tracks. This is where these key spikes come into play. So I'll kind of explain what I'm doing here as I'm doing it. I'm gonna open up just my basic logic noise gate to start. I have no attack. It's about 500 total five to 600 total milliseconds of time for this for the source just to start. Um, so here are my key spikes. You probably have these in your session. They are just printed little blips of audio. And what we use these for, aside from a variety of different keying things, is to sidechain noise gates and control noise gates. So instead of looking at the source audio and trying to do the math and figure out where the bleed is and stuff, this plugin only has to Look at a side chain, and if I pull up audio track 54, and now it'll accurately let the source audio through the noise gate without having to deal with any of the bleed that's actually on the track. Um, we'll use key spikes more, but they are very, very accurate ways of controlling noise gates in a mix. And since we've gone through our MIDI and printed these spikes down as audio, I know that every time a snare's hit, this is going to accurately open, allow the snare through, and then close in this given amount of time. And I never really actually have to worry about looking at my noise gate. Hey, is that right? Am I catching all the quiet hits? Um, super, super accurate way to make sure your gates work. It's kind of set and forget in that sense. So I'm going to go ahead and put the noise gate as a starting point on a couple tracks. And then for my toms, I just have to select 55, 56, and 57. So you're 55. You're 56, and you're 57. And my kick mic, is, my kick spike is 24. So again, no attack. Might go a little short on the kick release. Not sure how to set this yet. We'll have to see when we get into the samples. And that was, what audio track was that? 24. Just make sure my uh, gates are all working. Give me some toms. Cool. All right. Well, there's a good starting point for that. Drums.
So at this point, I'd probably look to apply just some really broad global filters to stuff. Um, I know I'm going to need to clean up some of the unwanted low end on some of my drum tracks. Might just grab any kind of SSL style. Here's an EQ. I like SSL filters. This is a decent version of one. Um, and it'll give me a good starting point with my snare at about 16 down. Probably the same for the toms. It's actually stereo EQ. Turning analog off because my mix rig is analog and hissy enough, which I'm sure you can tell by the audio you are hearing right now. For symbols, I'll probably start around 125. And for rooms, again, I'll just kill some sub. These are pretty safe starting points. It's very rare in a mix like this with the style of kick drum that I'm going to want anything below 60 hertz in my room. So I think I'm just going to get that out of the way to start. So I can definitely tell by the way I have my kicks right now is I would have been changing this blend a decent amount in the mix before I had kind of looped it around a slower part of the mix and it sounded pretty good. And now I'm hearing it with the double bass and it's like there's some build up and some ugly frequencies in there and it's a bit too long of a kick drum for some of these fast parts. Um, so I might look to find another spot of the song where maybe I can get a better in between sort of starting point, maybe where there's some busier kicks and I could just see how they all sit together. So you, so you won't change the blend from part to part. You'll find something that's no, a good I average. I mean, as we automate through, I will, but the best idea for me is to get all the samples in a place where I have to move them the least Got because it. the less automation I have to do, then the, the easier the end result will be. And if I can just play with a couple faders now and find a balance that's sitting kind of good more frequently, um, it'll just be less detail work later. Okay. And that's a big part of how that's going to hit the compressors and everything. It's like getting the balance between all my elements right now and getting the vibe of it dialed is that kind of less is more approach for this mix. It all kind of goes into this kind of stuff where it's like, I don't want to be constantly changing the picture if I don't have to. I do want the band in the room thing um, and not having, and try to get sneaky with like, oh, the clicky sample shows up or this shows up or this, and then it starts to turn into, it starts to veer away from just what the actual band can sound like in one shot. Yep. Um, so I'm going to do my best to get us to a starting point where I don't have to do a, lo a lot of that kind of tap dancing with the automation for this. And then the amount of low end in the kick, how loud the bounce is between the drums, it'll all hit the compressors the right way, get me that vibe I like, and I will be left with less to do. So um, I think it's one of my boomier kick samples that might be a little loud. So this is like some build, this is definitely not one I'd feature so loud. I might try to turn these down. Cool. I can tell that I'm gonna need some high end on this kick. Um, I recorded the kick dark on purpose because I had a feeling I'd be brightening it up um, with a sample for some of this kind of stuff, but I'm still a little darker than I want to be. Um, so I think what I'll do now is maybe start to look at going into my chain here and turning on uh, my kick EQ and trying to get a little more of that high-end presence in. This is sitting better for me as far as the relationship between all the kick mics. So in the cut, I'm just going to... I'll just loop this part a little bit, play around with my um, Heritage EQ, which I have patched in on the kick drum, and then see if I can maybe get a little more presence on this.
like where this is sitting. I can even aim to B it so you can hear the difference. This is a could use a little more sub too while I'm here, so I might put a little shelf in at 60. Now that that's a little brighter, I might look at taking my samples down a little too. Again, this if I can get a little more of the real kick dynamic in, I'll have to do a little less on the automation side layer. Yeah, so we're at a better balance. Could you just, uh, because the it was a little unclear. Sure, what's up? Uh, could you just tell us what it is that you did on the EQ? So on the EQ, I just added a bit of, I think it's a 3.2K bump and a little bit of a high shelf at 10K. And then it kind of brought out that presence that I wanted in the kick drum. Not too clicky, but it's brighter and I can hear it cutting through the track more. Um, and then a little tiny bump on the sub, like a 60 hertz shelf, just for a little extra low in fatness from that EQ, which is nice. Um, it put me in a way better spot than what I was just listening to. So. I'm definitely happy with that. So I might take a look before I get to the compressors. I might kind of go through my uh, snare and toms and just see if there's anything to do on the EQ stage now also. So I have this set very short in comparison to what the actual body of the snare is gonna be. The whole approach to tracking this snare was to tune it really high, get like that kind of ring thing out of it and use the initial tack and kind of ring as sort of the realism like impact of the snare and then use other samples to kind of fill out the body of the rest of the snare. So I've probably I'll go through and see what I've got here, but I've probably found one or two samples that were similar in uh, character to the actual real snare, and then probably some stuff that will help just fill in the body of the snare that maybe don't sound so good on their own, but more act as like a layer to extend the snare a little bit. Um, so we're gonna go sh short on the sample, one or two one shots to kind of even it out, see if that kind of blend can change and do some cool things in the track, and then at least something that gives it like a little more length in body because I'm treating it very short. So let me see what I actually have printed here. Here's my snare. This is a very similar sounding sample to the drum I have. So I might start with that as like my main one shot. Cool, just a little more hi-fi effect on the attack of it. And this sounds like something that I think could give me a little more body to the decay of the snare. Again, a, a sample that I would never use on my own as sort of a standalone snare, but blending this into the snare is probably going to give me what I was looking for. Then lastly, just a very dynamic snare that we put some time and love into with adjusting our MIDI velocities. 
uh, that looks like it was probably printed with Superior. Overhead and then two different room pictures also. I used the multi-outputs uh, superior track to probably generate these. There's something a little shorter. Actually, these sound a little closer. This is a bit of a bigger room. So it looks like I've got a dry sample, the overheads, some closer mics, and then something kind of far away kind of gunshotty and then using in a given point in the track I can change the one to some of the rooms to give me a different effect for the snare for now I'll try to just put it at a starting point I'm just gonna jam the drums and kind of turn these up and down and see what sounds good That sounded pretty cool. I want to hear how loud my room mics actually are right now. If we go back to my main bus page, you can see I have these individual buses here that are real kick, fake kick, real snare, fake snare, through the toms, and then also with the rooms, I have some. I have a separate bus where I can control how much of each real instrument or sample instrument I want to use. Um, and I think I just need to listen to sort of the kick snare in the rooms and just play with a little of that to try to land myself in a point where I have believably real sounding drums and enough of the ambience from the rooms where I could start to incorporate other elements. real drum mics which I do like and I've got my sample kind of loud I might bring him down and bring him up a little more Yeah, that sounded pretty cool. 